Um, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can hear me. Okay, my name is Priya, and I'm going to talk about uh, voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi calls today. Um, yeah, as I said, my name is Priya, and I work at ERNB GmbH, uh, ERNW. Uh, it's a company in Germany. Um, yeah, I like to do telecommunication security, uh, also some binaries. I like to play with PCAPs, logs, and I like a little bit of everything in security. Um, I have um, a blog. It's kind of outdated, but yeah, um, I also write in company blog, uh, Insinuator. Um, so today we'll be um, talking about as I said, about voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi security. I will give a very brief introduction and a background about the structure uh, of the systems involved, um, and also some attacks on OpenIMS, which is an open source um, um, implementation of the IMS, or IP multimedia subsystem, which is the backend of uh, Volti or voice over Wi-Fi. Um, so that's more like a simulation attacks because it's not the real provider. But after that, I will be also trying to see how we can um, apply these kind of attacks in real telecom providers uh, and also proposing some mitigation. Um, so to start with, um, uh, voice over LTE or voice over Wi-Fi are variants of voice over IP. Uh, this means uh, apart from the traditional circuit switched networks, um, these uh, networks, are, these technologies are using packet switching, uh, or in other words, um, the, the, the data is transmitted as packets like in the usual uh, internet, like I IP packets. Uh, and the backend uh, is called IMS, or IP multimedia subsystem. Uh, which handles all the uh, calling uh, and yeah, um, all the um, IP-related functionalities. And it came for the first time, voice over LTE came in South Korea uh, by SK Telecom and LG. LG. And in Germany, uh, it came only in 2015, March, uh, by Vodafone. And voice over Wi-Fi came only in 2016. So this means this is rather new and... Um, not yeah, uh, widely used, but I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you already have voice over Wi-Fi, or in other words, it's called Wi-Fi calling in your phones, uh, and also voice over LTE. So if you make a call, and if you don't see the LTE switching back, um, then most probably you are making the call via LTE or using LTE. But yeah, most of the phones like Samsung, iPhone, or uh, Sony Xperia um, support this features. Uh, so to start with, I will talk a little bit about the IMS background, or IMS, or IP multimedia subsystem. Um, so that is the Volti stack. Um, that's the user interface, and the tower, and the gateway, and the IMS. But in my talk, I'll be covering only these three layers, so which is the IP, um, and the, and the layer be above. So it's more like an application layer um, yeah, talk. Um, nothing at the radio or the physical layer. So it's only going to be about IP or uh, voice over IP, which is, yeah, we will talk about that later. Uh, yeah, and these are the um, systems involved uh, in the IMS. So IMS consists of call session control functions, so CSCF. Uh, and this, these are the systems that actually provide the calling capability. And yeah, there is a gateway, and there is also HSS, which contains all the um, identification information or authentication information, or like your MCs uh, or information like that. Uh, this is how uh, a, a calling, um, yeah, calling would look like when Alice is calling Bob. Um, the first packet that gets sent is called invite. Uh, and yeah, I should talk about SIP. Uh, SIP is session initiation protocol, uh, which is the protocol which is very 
similar to HTTP, which is a text-based protocol. And when you make a phone call uh, or voice over LTE call um, or voice over Wi-Fi call, um, there is a SIP packet that can get sent via the IP interface. And yeah, it goes to your provider, so it could be anything there. Um, and then, yeah, it returns ringing. That's when you hear the ringing bell. And yeah, when the person picks up the call, then there is a 200 OK message sent back. And it is at this uh, region. It's usually RTP, where the real voice call happens. And yeah, uh, that's when you get charged uh, for your call and so on. So to look a little bit deeper, uh, that's how the SIP would look like. So as I said, it's similar to an HTTP uh, protocol. So instead of the get and post, you have invite or register or options or yeah, uh, keywords like that. Then you see from and to address. So this is actually a voice over IP example. But in case of voice over LTE, this will be a phone number here and also the to phone number. Um, then you also have something called SDP, which is Session Description Protocol. But uh, yeah, the details are not so important at the moment because they agree on what kind of support does your phone have and how are you going to make the call and so on. But we are mostly going to play with the SIP part for today. So yeah, um, so the first part is going to be about uh, attacking OpenIMS. Uh, as I said before, OpenIMS is an open source implementation of the IMS, uh, which contains the call session control functions uh, implemented in that. Uh, so there are some requirements for this. Um, I used um, SIP proxy as a tool, uh, which allows to basically proxy and do the injection and play with it. Um, yeah, you can also use Viproy toolkit, toolkit. So they already have some exploits uh, in Metasploit. So yeah, if you are playing with Skype or something like that and want to yeah, uh, try, you can use Viproy. Um, and uh, in this test, test, I'm using mainly uh, IMS clients, like yeah, it, it's Twinkle in Ubuntu or Bogue in IMS uh, or in Windows. Um, but yeah, as I said before, this is kind of simulated attacks as it is in a simulated environment and I have my own VM as the uh, backend. So that's how um, the SIP proxy tool would look like. You can set up the client uh, and the port and yeah. And that's the open IMS implementation. So it, it has got the call session control function uh, systems and the HSS um, as its its parts, and yeah, how is it related to voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi? So as I said, it makes use of SIP or session initiation protocol, which is very same as in the case of uh, voice over IP. And yeah, we are mainly going to do some SIP header injections uh, in the first phase. Uh, and also, another important thing to note here is that there is no IPsec in this simulated uh, attack environment uh, scenario. And okay, both attacker and the other end user uh, is are registered users. Um, sorry about the grammar. Uh, so the first attack is MSRP fuzzing. So uh, MSRP is message session relay. Um, so whenever you send a chat message to keep track of the relay, uh, this particular protocol is used. Um, but that's not so important. So there's a particular header. And uh, if you give a first input into this particular header, giving a long string. So that's an attack which is there already there in the Viproy Metasploit toolkit. So you can simply uh, use the exploit and try to test this. Um, and, well, you will find that uh, it basically crashes the client on the other end. So you are making a call to someone and you can, yeah, uh, crash the, uh, the other end user if they're, um, yeah, if they're using a bad client, of course. Um, yeah, so that was... Um, the first um, attack, which basically tries to do some fuzzing on the header. So that's uh, the first attack which I wanted to talk. 
Um, the second attack is related to location manipulation. So in the SIP header, there is a particular header called p access network info. Uh, this basically defines uh, which location are you in. So mm, yeah, it contains these informations, which is mobile network code, mobile country code, local area code, and cell identifier. So these are yeah integer integers, but this basically uh, uh, maps you to which exact location are you in right now. So um, your your phone, uh, when making a SIP call, uh, contains this uh, P access network info, and an attacker can simply change this and put whatever value uh, he or she needs. Uh, and this is not uh, checked in the backend in case of open IMS. So as we see, um, when a modified P access network info is sent, it is accepted by the IMS and forwarded to the other end. And there is no cross validation with HSS, uh, which is the backend um, data server and for user location, which is used during initial registration of the phone. Um, yeah, and this can be used for evading lawful interception techniques. Um, uh, another interesting attack is um, roaming information. So uh, there is another header called p-visited network ID. Um, so this header field uh, is not supposed to be coming from the user user end. It is uh, added only at the access um, point layer. Um, but if an attacker tries to put this header already um, from the user end, as inject this header, um, yeah, we found that at the open IMS side, on the other side, um, the fake uh, domain is not removed, but instead just the original one is added in the in the later. So. Well, ba basically, it also depends how the charging functionalities of a particular provider is implemented. But if it's not implemented properly, um, an attacker can make use of make making his roaming calls as local calls just by changing yeah, this header uh, values. Um, well, yeah, and then as SIP is also um, an extensible protocol, so you can add additional headers. So, well, yeah, the additional header can be added as X header. And you can try to send whatever content you want, and uh, this still get accepted, uh, but at the server side, and gets forwarded to the other end. So, yeah, this is an extra header, and you could simply send that. Um, so in the first phase, uh, we did some uh, simulation uh, attacks with OpenIMS as our backend, uh, which is and yeah, we, as we saw, there was a fuzzing attack, there was a user location manipulation, uh, there was another roaming information manipulation or trying to put uh, yeah, extra header injection. So yeah, to, to understand this, this is more like a man in the end attack. So the user, a registered user itself is the attacker in that end. And all these attacks were done with IP, without IPsec. Uh, well, these are not the... Uh, yeah, only attacks. There are more obvious attacks possible, like spoofing, um, injection. Um, so if there are XML uh, entities used, um, yeah, uh, XML or SQL, or trying denial of service um, or fuzzing, uh, as we saw. Uh, so these these are the kind of attacks which is already there uh, in the voiceover IP field or yeah, uh, in in this area. Now uh, we are trying to see how, uh, what, what is the current state, and how uh, can I use this knowledge for attacking the telecom providers. Um, so yeah, in this case, um, it was not as easy to do uh, injection attacks, but there because there is IPsec in place, so uh, and you don't have the keys for the IPsec, so. In case of real providers, that is the first target uh, for me. Uh, if I want to do uh, some sniffing or injection, I need to get the IPsec keys. Um, so in this um, uh, yeah, um, testing, I 
had uh, voice over LTE or voice over Wi-Fi enabled SIM cards. So not all SIM cards support that. So first of all, you need to have a supported SIM. Um, and I also used uh, SIM trace hardware. This is by Osmocom and uh, uh, not Osmocom, of course. Yeah, but uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting hardware device uh, that allows you to sniff uh, the interface between the SIM and your phone. Um, that that is where how I'm going to extract uh, the IPsec keys. Mm, and then you also need voice over LTE or voice over Wi-Fi enabled uh, phones. Mm, and to yes, there is uh, IPsec here. There is going to be ESP or Encapsulation Security Protocol, which is a part of IPsec. Um, so if you want to play around with it, you need to compile Wireshark on your own um, with Gcrypt library enabled so that you have more additional features. Uh, so yeah, to start with, the interfaces which I'm looking at are generally called RMNet 0 or RMNet 1. Um, the, this simply contains IP addresses just like your Ethernet interface. Um, and in case of voice over Wi-Fi, um, yeah, there, there is a tunnel which is uh, th uh, going to be sent through WLAN 0. But I also found um, another interface called EPDG1, um, which was there as a virtual interface, which contained all the data which I could use for sniffing. And then I also did um, iSIM uh, interface with the SIM trace hardware. So we will get into details of all these um, yeah, in detail. Um, also, as I told before, uh, there is IPsec in place here. So there is uh, ESP, which is Encapsulation Security Protocol, um, which is used. Uh, so it's not uh, plain, as in the case of OpenIMS before. Um, and yeah, this means that there is integrity protection. So there is always a, a hash added to each and every zip request that gets sent. Um, and in case of voice over Wi-Fi, there is encryption, of course, because yeah, it's going through the internet. So um, yeah, so this is how the ESP packets would look like. And yeah, in case of voice over LTE, um, it's always IPv6. Uh, in case of the providers which I looked at. Um, so for testing um, voice over LTE, the specific interfaces are called RMNet 1, 0, 2, 3, yeah, um, as such. But these are the main interfaces to look into. One is usually uh, for your data. So your LTE data, uh, mobile data, uh, works through one of that. and one is for voice. So when you enable voice over LTE, the other new interface get turned on. And for voice over Wi-Fi, I could look into these. But WLAN 0 always had encrypted communication in this case. But uh, this particular interface uh, had non-encrypted uh, traffic. Um, yeah, this is yeah simply using ADB shell and ADB forward for viewing the traffic. So as I said before, to give a clear idea, in case of voice over LTE, there is no encryption, but only integrity protection. Uh, and the traffic is sent. Um, and we are listening at RMNet 1 or RMNet 0. It changed according to providers what exactly is the interface name. And in case of voice over Wi-Fi sniffing, um, there is an IPsec tunnel. Uh, here between WLAN 0, but there was an uh, additional hidden interface called EPDG, which contained all the data um, in a non-encrypted form, which we could look into. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to discuss in detail about this, but if somebody is interested, um, this, is, this could be very useful, uh, especially in the setup, because um, routing is disabled in the voice over LTE um, interface, so you can't simply set a route uh, table for that. So there is a trick to use um, IP tables to do that. Um, yeah, that's basically sending to man in the middle, which is my laptop, and then for routing it back 
uh, to the phone. But in some cases, I didn't have to do this as well. Uh, sometimes it works with SOCAT uh, and burp and just trying to inject. But I have a demo in that case. Um, yeah, we, we will take a look into that. Uh, so what did I find uh, when I was trying to look into the interfaces which I mentioned before? Um, I found um, information disclosures. Um, so there was IMEI numbers, which I could see of the caller and the callee. Um, so IMEI is the private identity of your phone, um, like a serial number uh, of the hard hardware MAC address kind of thing. Yeah. And um, I could see U Transcell ID, um, but I, I could see this only in the SIP register. So this is something which is sent before the whole IPsec begins. And uh, yeah, if there is something like a fake pay station or something, um, yeah, it, that can lead to leaking of this. Um, but there were other cases where we were able to see um, uh, the location information of a caller getting leaked at the callie side, which is bad. But yeah, I just rechecked this yesterday, but that is not there right now. So. Mm. Yeah, at the callie end, uh, yeah, there is still IMEI numbers. Um, and this is the worst part that it also leaks the IMC. IMC is the um, private identity of your SIM card. So your SIM card has a public identity, which is your phone number, and a private identity, which is used for authentication um, at the back end. And yeah, leaking that is not so good, and it's bad. So that was a finding. Um, and there were some private IPs of the IMS, but that's not of high security implication, as I see. Um, so we have some information disclosures, but I wanted to see how I can get the um, um, IPsec keys and so that I can do some kind of injection because, um, yeah, there is integrity protection in each and every zip packet that gets sent. So if I want to inject something, then I have to generate my own hash uh, of the packet. Um, so I use SimTrace, and this is how it would... So it will basically listen at the interface in the SIM. It's called the iSIM interface, and gives you yeah, a payload of whatever it sees just like that. Um, yeah, we kind of broke that device, um, and that was with S7, but it's much more easier with S Samsung S6. Um, so you just take out the SIM and put that in this in this hardware, and then connect the um, yeah SIM tracer into the SIM slot of the phone. And then you connect the SIM tracer to your laptop. So that, that's the setup. Um, OK. Now I need to say a little bit about uh, EAP, AKA. Um, this is Extended Authentication uh, or Key Agreement Protocol. Um, so this is the main protocol which is used for authenticating your SIM card um, with, the, with your provider. And how this works is the server would send you a challenge, um, a random challenge, and also, so that's called the RAND, and also an authentication value of the server to you. And the peer or uh, the user end, uh, based on the um, challenge, which is the RAND that is sent, it generates a response, which is the RAS. And it also generates the session key, and that's the interesting point for us. Um, OK, so uh, the session key uh, consists of CK and IK, which is ciphering key and integrity key. And that's what we are going to look at. Um, with the SIM tracer um, uh, hardware dump, which we got before, um, I, when I put that in Wireshark, I could dump that as a PCAP and try to put that in Wireshark. I uh, see that, sorry. 
Yeah, I see that as GSM algorithm and authenticate and a get response packet right there. And I was able to see the rant and authentication values and also the IK and CK in there. But it was not uh, parsed properly, so Vaisha couldn't read it. Uh, so I had to check up their specifications, and I wrote a Wireshark dissector myself to um, get the CK and IK out of that. Um, and I also wanted to uh, check if this itself is the key which is used uh, in sending the ESP packets, uh, which we actually see in the RMNet or uh, WLAN or EPDG interfaces, which I was talking about before. Um, so when you give a wrong key, it would tell you it's incorrect. And I just need to set up SA or security association and give them what is the yeah, uh, algorithm. And this is the key which I extracted. So this is for authentication. So this is the IK part. Uh, and I provided that it's the authentication. And I was able to see that uh, Wireshark detected that this is the right key, which is used. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, to give a summary, um, we saw that uh, we tried to sniff at the different interfaces uh, of uh, Volti and Voice over Wi-Fi. And we found information leaks like IMEI and MC and private IPs. Uh, and then uh, we tried to look at the ISIM interface and then, yeah, wrote a Wireshark parser and got the IK and CK. Mm. And yeah, we also did the validation with the Wireshark gcrypt library to see if this key exact is itself used. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall we had an uh, some attacks in OpenIMS and also looked at current providers and what they have. Um, yeah, this is what, what we discussed right now that we extracted the CK and IK. Uh, maybe I'll show a demo right now, which is... Yeah, so with ADB shell, I'm trying to get a shell in my phone. Uh, it's a rooted phone. And that is the interface, RMNet 0, how you see that. So in case of voice over Wi-Fi, you will also see EPDG1 and also RMNet1 and more of those. Um, I'm simply trying to do TCP dump and And with ADB forward, you can just give that command in your shell on your desktop and get all the packets. Now we want to see only SIP. We see some SIP packets already coming there. Now at this point, I am sending a message from my phone. Um, So you can also make a call, and that will also be there. Um, now I, we see the zip invite packets. And then you can see that your phone number and, yeah, I mean, this is how it looks like. Um, that's your location information. Um, yes, that, that's also the server response in blue. Um, and that's the message which I sent um, in my phone.
Now I'm trying to uh, do a simple replay attack by trying to send that by a burp. Um, yeah, just changing the content. And I haven't tried a lot of injection in this right now, but. And I'm sending that to the phone, to the Wi-Fi interface, as my laptop and my phone is in the same Wi-Fi network. And I open a SoCat listener, which will listen to yeah, my um, packets coming from Burp. Now this is the most simplest setup, but this may not work like this always. Sometimes you have to use IP tables, uh, like the list of um, yeah, rules, and do post for forwarding and uh, pre-routing. But in this case, this is easier. Mm. Yeah, initially, uh, when I tried to inject, um, I couldn't because there were some values which I had to change to make that as a unique um, message because there are values like this branch and call ID um, and tag and values like that. Um, yeah, I'm just changing that later. To another random value so that it appears unique. Um, Yeah, after that, when I try to inject that again, then I got a successful response from the server. So the message basically got sent and it got accepted on the other side. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's easy to do more of injection attacks in the same setup. So I just showed only the setup and you can try uh, injection in the, all the other headers and try to see if it works or not. Um, so the mitigation for these kind of injection attacks towards the IMS server, um, the first basic policy is never trust uh, the user end. So never assume that IPsec, having IPsec will solve all the problem of injection because I mean it's easy to get the IPsec keys and uh, do injection attacks. Mm, so there should always be something like traffic monitoring uh, in the gateways and that performs deep packet inspection, and also whitelist rules um, yeah, to see what is expected in each header fields in SIP, and also encryption, um, at least to uh, prevent something like a fake base station to see your MCs, um, and also user awareness um, to not connect to suspicious providers that pops up in your, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, we can discuss that now. Hey, thanks very much, Priya. <laughs> so, any questions? Any people taking lots of photos of the stuff there? Any questions in the room? Okay. Everybody wants to get to the donuts, I can see. <laughs> Hackers donuts. Who 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 ordered those things? Okay, well Priya's here, and I'm sure you, she'll be uh, very happy to talk to you guys, uh, talk to everybody outside if necessary. So get the donuts. <laughs>